Hi class. I'm going to show you real quickly here how to do the basic uh, process of uh, assignment uh, week one, assignment three here. And I have my two templates here. This is the Illustrator one and this is the Photoshop one. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do it in Photoshop here. Uh, open with Photoshop CS5 and there is the template. And to start with, remember now we're going to use seven shapes or up to seven shapes. Uh, you can repeat some shapes, but try to keep it to just seven, and then you're going to, whatever you do in your first design, you're going to do in the other three as well, and change it a little bit. In other words, use the same shapes to create all four designs, but different arrangements of those shapes. So I'm going to start by, uh, these shapes are all on separate layers, you can see over here, um, and if I click on this one, I have Auto Select Layer, which makes it very easy to move things around. So now, if I grab and move, that'd be great, except then I won't have any more for the next design. So what I'm going to do, Command-Z, uh, instead I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, and then when I click and drag, it just creates a copy. So I'm going to create two squares. Uh, I think then I'll create two circles. And that's four shapes, and then maybe five, and uh, six, and seven shapes. Now, fortunately, they're all on top of each other the way I want them. In other words, the white ones are on top of the black one. Now, it could be, for instance, let's say I wanted this black one to go on top of the white one. What I would do is, if I look where I am here, now you're going to have also the layer above, which is that sort of blocking layer. <clears throat> the order in which they are, appear in the, the layers panel is essentially which one is on top of what. So if I want this one, which is the one I've clicked on, which is what is selected, if I want that to be on top, I would click and drag it all the way up, not up to the top there, but here. And then now it would be on top. Okay, so that's how you move and rearrange layers. Now I'm going to undo that. So I actually want it underneath. Uh, and now I can arrange my shapes and create a, a balanced composition. And I'm just going to do something simple here. And as you can see, these purple lines, these are the, uh, the auto, um, auto guides. And if you don't have those turned on, they're really helpful for lining things up. If you go to uh, View, uh, let's see, where is it now? Nope, I guess it's actually... Uh, yeah, let's see. Where is it? Show smart guides. There we go. And there, that you'll see that's selected. And if you don't have that selected, you probably want to select it to make that work for you. Okay, uh, so let's see. That helps me line things up. That was real quick and easy to get that centered. You do the same there. Uh, now, this is not quite a balanced composition, so I'm going to keep working with this a little bit here. Uh, and you know what? Maybe I won't use the white one. Maybe instead I'll use the black one. And I'll pull that one. Oops. Uh, undo. Alt. And I'll put that there. Now here's another way. You'll see it's behind the white one. I want to bring it on the front. So the other way to do that is go to Layer, Arrange, Bring to Front. There it is. And that's also how you do things in Illustrator. They don't have layers the same way. Okay, now another way if I want to adjust this slightly is if I select it. Now, again, auto select layer has to be on. And if I want to move that a little bit, I can hit the arrow keys and get it lined up more perfectly. Okay, so there, that's my first composition. Now, these are the elements I'm going to be using for, my, for all other three compositions. So one way to get a quick copy of all of them in this exact design, in fact, is to click and drag a marquee around all of those shapes and then hold my alt key down and that will copy the entire group and that's a useful function okay so now I have the same shapes but in, a, in, in the same arrangement and I want to create a different composition so I'm gonna whoops now you'll see they're still together because over here they're all selected I can just select one or I can click on one here and that will select just one again now I can do something like this, and this maybe. Uh, let's try it like this. And then maybe like this. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what to do here. Now that's not the best composition. 
Okay, so I just skipped ahead and created a new design down here using the same basic shapes. And I want to show you one other little thing you can do. Uh, now, so far all we've done is move the shapes around and, and change their layer order, but you can also rotate them. And now to do that, I'm going to select this white square here. And there are a couple ways to do it. Uh, the slow way is to go to Edit, Transform, Rotate. And then if you hold the shift key down, you can do it in nice uh, 45 or 22 and a half degree increments, because otherwise it gets all kind of wacky like that. So if I hold the shift key down there, that's what I had in mind. And then you click on the move tool and it says apply the transformation. Yes, apply. Um, the quick way is to just hit command T or uh, I think it's control T on a PC and that gives you those borders there. Now also, click on the move tool. Another thing you can do is you can have the show transform controls on all the time which means that at any time when you select uh, a shape it will show you the the transform tools for it. So if I selected this shape it's automatically going to have it in the transform mode and then if I hold the shift key down I can do something like this and so on. Uh, but usually that can be a little uh, interfering with what you're normally doing, so I tend to not have it on. I have to click the Move tool again, so I usually show Transform Controls off. You know, I go back and forth. So anyway, okay, so there's my third design, and now I'm going to quickly uh, do a fourth one here. So I'll just uh, do this while we're talking here. I'll, uh, whoops, I'll, I'll first select this design, and then I'll hold the Alt key down again and make a copy of it. Uh, and be very careful about having equal amount of distance from this side to this side. You know, you wouldn't want it like that. That would look really out of balance. And the idea is to keep it balanced. And now, a symmetrical balance like these two is very easy, but it's good to try to do some asymmetrical ones like this. So let's see if we can come up with something that's asymmetrical. Now, first I have to click off here, so now I can move these shapes individually. Uh, and let's see what we can do. Now again, this is like the difference between like a C and a B. It's coming up with something like, like that. I'm, I'm going to do this off camera and see what I can come up with. Okay, so something like this. Very, very asymmetrical, playing around a little bit, trying to create, you know, some things that deal with the edges here. Now, one thing you've got to remember, to have the edges cropped like that, you've got to make sure that this top layer right here, layer 2 it's called, is on and is on the very top. I actually ended up with it somewhere in the middle when I was playing around there. So if you need to, you can of course just drag it up to the top. Because of course if I drag it down to the bottom here, then suddenly, uh-oh, I don't have cropping. So make sure that's at the very top. And of course you can go to Layer, Arrange, where is it? Uh, arrange, uh, Bring to Front. Obviously it doesn't need to because it's already on the front. Okay, so, and it's, it's a locked layer, whoops, so that means that you can't edit it and you don't want to. I mean, you can unlock it, of course, but, so here's maybe a little more crazy uh, asymmetrical composition that is still has some sense of balance. Uh, maybe it's a little bottom heavy here. Maybe I would push this one off a little bit down here. Uh, now, of course, also if I move over into this one, uh-oh, suddenly it appears in that composition. So you don't want to do that. Now, there are ways to fix that. I'm not going to really get into that. So just try to limit yourself to not having things interfere with the other uh, design there. Okay, so now I have all four of my designs done, and I need to save it. So first, I want to save as, file, save as, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I'm not going to save it as a template. I'm going to save it as my last name, first name. And of course, obviously put your names there. And then underscore week 1A3. And that's as a, a Photoshop file, format Photoshop. First, I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file. Now that I have it saved and it's uh, there with all the layers preserved, so if I want to change it, which I probably will, uh, then I can go back and move things around without having to redo everything. Because um, I can already see I have little problems here, little alignment issues I would probably want to change. Maybe I'd want to move that around and so on. Uh, then I will go to File, uh, whoops, not File. Uh, actually, it is File, uh, Save for Web and Devices. 
and that's how I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Now it'll give you four versions by default, uh, and over here, you know, you can have presets. You can choose different things that you want. JPEG high is usually a good one. Uh, you can go. I usually I say it's okay to go full quality. Um, that would be a hundred. You know, you can uh, crank it all the way up to hundred. Uh, because you'll see that it's really not that big of a file, 63 kilobytes, not that big. Um, now you can say the image size is set to 800 by 600, uh, and so on and so on. There's a lot of things to change there. But I would just go with that one and then say save. And again, it automatically remembers my file name, which is fine because I can keep it exactly the same because now I'm saving as a JPEG. Okay, and save.